All right, so for everybody's viewing pleasure, I have probably one of the last ones of these made. This company has uh, basically been dissolved by TTI, who also owns Hoover and Oric and a couple other brands. But I managed to score this machine off of eBay. The price has gone up a little bit now. Um, but the particular seller that I bought this from, I got it for $149 for tax. I do want to make note, I have not pulled this thing out of the box yet. I did open up the lid just to check something inside it, but I have not pulled it out of the box. Anyway, so I got this for $149 off of eBay. I doubt it has any sort of warranty attached to it from Royal or from TTI for that matter. Honestly, I think the older ones are a bit better and uh, I'll let you guys know exactly why I think that. Uh, let's look over the outside of the box first. You can see that somebody's ticked this off for the model number that's inside it. And this is one thing that I was hoping for and it was true. Assembled in USA with globally made components, of course, because just about nothing is actually completely manufactured in the United States anymore, unfortunately. I don't think there's any factories in the U.S. that still produce motors. I think all of those have uh, gone overseas, but I believe it's a 2018 was when this thing was put together. We'll uh, pull this tape off. Look at the rest of the box here. It's really not going to be too much else, I don't think. Yeah. So it says, do not cut with knife, which I did not have to do to begin with. And this is what we're greeted with. So first thing, we have... A manual which is also in Spanish of course it's split right in half in between take a look at that later Let's pull all of this out of the box this is nice so on the older models they didn't have a rotating uh, cord hook Tools, a new belt, some hardware. This is actually a really good quality cord. Nothing else in the box. Here we have this machine and all its glory. It's even a desiccant pack. This is brand new and uh, kind of surprisingly the uh, aluminum doesn't have that much of a shine to it. I don't know if they ever did or didn't. Nice polyurethane wheels. Oh wow, those spin really good actually. All right, so we're gonna put this together. First, what we're gonna do is slide the two handle pieces together, just like this. Get some hardware out of here. So now we will stick this into the machine. So all that's been complete, nice and tight. Let's check on the belt situation. 
I've noticed, and I didn't do this, got a couple blemishes here in the aluminum. I don't know how that happened. So here's our belt tool. I've actually never owned one of these before. I've always either used my fingers or a flathead screwdriver. New belt. So there's already a belt installed. Let's tip this back real carefully. So this thing has been uh, sitting for at least a couple years. So let's check the quality of the belt. Of course, we don't. We won't know if there's any flat spots until we turn it on and run it. I was hoping that this one would have the uh, what they call the adjusto right little uh, deal that goes right in the middle here, and it's got a little nub on it. It basically tells you uh, if the floor nozzle is adjusted properly with the floor the proper suction. I know I can just buy one but it would have been nicer if it had just come with it, I guess. So we got one belt, as you guys already saw. Look at the business end. Full wood brush roll, non-replaceable strips. I would guess that there's ball bearings in this brush roll, but I don't know that for sure. Let's pull the sole plate off. Yeah, that's a nice looking brush roll. I know some of these, uh, some of the older Royal machines had the rug beater bars in the brush rolls, and I guess they, for whatever reason, got away from that. I don't really know why they did. So there's the aforementioned polyurethane wheels, kind of like a, like a longboard skateboard wheel. They spin really nicely. I've never had, and I've owned quite a few Royal, Royal machines now, I've never had any of my Royals have a nice uh, freewheeling wheel like this. So we have a cord protector cover here um, on the older models that I've had. Those have been metal. This looks like it's uh, sort of like a high grade plastic. It's probably fine. I'm not really too worried about that. <clears throat> We have the data plate here at the bottom. This is a 10 amp motor. I don't think any of the machines that I have had have had a big, a motor that's this big. I wanna say that they were all like seven or eight amps. I know one or two of you guys know that stuff better than I do. One other thing that kind of, it's kind of annoying is Royal, for whatever reason, went with this four position height selector, four or five position. I prefer the infinite adjuster one. It's got a little knob on it. And you just keep running it until you dial it in with the little guy that's supposed to be up here. And uh, well, that system works really well. I don't know why they got away from that. So now for the bag. Let's put this the plastic. Thankfully, they did include a bag. It takes a Royal Type B bag, which I have never seen. I've never seen any of their bags in yellow before. Brand new. And there's always this washer that's in here. These washers like to fall out. At least they do on the older ones. Something that kind of happens with age. And let's see. So, the bag chain, what this loops onto, is I would have hoped that they would have changed this after all these years. It's just a little piece of wood, wood dowel. That's all it is. 
I've seen a few of these break on some of the other ones. I've always been able to replace it with uh, you know, like a piece of plastic, like a ballpoint pen or something. Uh, I was kind of hoping that they would have uh, changed that, but it doesn't look like they have. And these go on nice and easy. All right, so I've got her plugged in. Let's try her out. I'm going to raise the nozzle all the way. Well, so this is a brand new vacuum, but I've already had to do something to it. The switch is bad. I checked the resistance on it. Well, first let me back up. So I shut this off, I went to go turn it back on, and nothing happened. I was 99% sure that there was not a motor issue, there wasn't any funky smells, no weird noises, nothing really going on out of the ordinary. It just didn't want to turn back on. So I started messing with the little switch lever a little bit. Of course it's not doing it now because it's all taken apart. But it just didn't feel right. Normally it would have a thunk, thunk on both sides, but it would only kind of do that in the middle and then it wouldn't do it at all, and I kept trying to make it do it some more, and then it, I guess it broke completely, so then it just wouldn't make any sort of noise when I was doing that. So I checked the resistance on on and off positions, not plugged into the wall, and there was nothing. I verified that the meter was good, the meter was reading resistance when it should and should not, so that was uh, basically strike one and all the nails in the coffin, but I decided to just take it apart and see what was wrong with it. Maybe it was something I could fix. And this little piece right here fell right out. I don't know if it was stuck in there somehow or uh, was bonded to something. It's probable that it was just in there loose, but what I did to further verify this was I crossed these two like this and then went and quickly plugged the machine into the wall twice. First time was pretty quick. Second time, I mean both times it turned on perfectly fine, but the second time I let it run for a little bit. Ran, ran perfectly fine. So now I gotta find a new switch for it. That's unfortunate. So I've got it at the shop. Went through all my switches that I've kept from uh, scrapped appliances. Typically I try and keep stuff like this. And of course, I only have one. It's already pre-wired, I guess. Doesn't really matter, they're both the same uh, wires. But should fit just fine. It's tough to figure out which uh, which end is on and off. So out with the old and with the new. Amazing. This is a far better switch. It's definitely older. 
but it's probably going to outlast uh, many parts of this vacuum, to be honest. Cut those two ends that go into the switch. Resoldered them on after I put some shrink wrap tubing, shrink wrap tubing up here, and then slid those down. So then we could protect the terminals from possibly arcing or grounding out against the uh, metal part of the body there. I don't think that would be a problem regardless because this just doesn't go in uh, far enough to, for that to happen, but better to be safe. So before we go back to the house. Works perfect now. Of course, we've got some random cattage now. She's not going to be around too much. She hates the vacuums. Yep. <laughs> uh, not having it. So, let's see how she runs now. I uh, ended up having to replace the belt. That other belt had a flat spot in it, which I kind of figured because it was in the machine for at least two years. They don't like being, they don't like sitting like that. It's a rubber belt, even though it's really heavy duty. They will develop a flat spot and they will kind of deform a little bit, even if you can't really see it. So let's try it now. <laughs> So really, the only thing that I don't like about this, and you guys will kind of notice notice what I'm saying in the video, but I've actually had to uh, down tune the sound when I'm using this. It's really loud. That's really the only thing I don't like about it. It seems like the other Royals I've had have been quieter. They don't seem like they're spinning a the RPM that this one is. That's probably why it's so loud. That's really my only gripe with it. Other than that, it's pretty lightweight. Seems to run well enough. And I mean, these are probably one of the best vacuums, uh, direct air machines that you can get for carpet cleaning. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's definitely a good vacuum for what I paid for it. These used to go brand new, three to $400, depending on where you went. You can get models of these that had a wider nozzle. This one, I believe, has a 14-inch nozzle. And you can get them all the way up to like 18 inches. So you can get them pretty big. But they're all fundamentally the same machine. There's very little differences between uh, the larger models. Some of them come with that adjuster right piece that goes right there, as I was saying earlier. But other than that, like I said, not too much of a difference. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more.